It's so much quieter these days without everyone around. Not that I'm pining for your return, you understand. I have my sources, and I know that each and every one of you is doing well and keeping busy with your endeavors. <sighs> Meanwhile, I'm left with a surplus of free time and the question of how to make the most of it. What about you? Any plans for the immediate future? <laughs> Traveling to the edge of existence and back wasn't enough? Well, if that's the case, I might have a suggestion for you. You've fought bravely and selflessly, helping those in need and saving our star from unimaginable threats. For your deeds, you've been hailed as the champion of Eorzea and a host of other incredible things. But why not put those titles aside for a while? Acquit yourself as a simple adventurer again, and travel the world in search of wonder. Oh, with so many exciting places to choose from, it's hard to narrow it down. But I believe I have the perfect destination in mind. Savner, that's where you should go next. I doubt you were able to squeeze in a proper tour of Rads at Han the last time you were there. What with the burning skies and rampaging monsters and so forth. And I'm sure Vritra would be pleased to see you. Then there's the bounty itself. The Empire's presence in the region was always a deterrent to exploration. So if you've a mind to sail that sea, now's your chance. Just think of all the new experiences you could have. Tell me, have you been to the ruins beneath the waters of the Bounty? As the bearer of Azem's crystal, you may consider your duty to see at least that much. Oh, I know that look. That's an adventurer ready to take on the world. In anticipation of an occasion like this, I was planning to gift you a new set of traveling clothes, but it's, uh, still a work in progress. Shouldn't take much longer now, though, so sit tight and I'll have the last few bits sewn up before you can finish another cup of tea. Stitching here and trimming there, not the threads with love and care. Just a little more to go. I'm sure you're still brimming with excitement. <laughs> I'm one with the needle. See how the fabric surrenders to my whims. Don't worry. I'll make sure the lining has plenty of pockets for all your little treasures. I swear adventurers are worse than children when it comes to hoarding every feather and leaf and animal hide they come across. Ah. 
Oh, we mustn't forget the waterproofing. Gods forbid you forget to disrobe before plunging into the sea, or a river, or a piping hot bath. You're awake. My apologies. I do get a little carried away with my sewing. You seem awfully cheerful. Pleasant dream? Or are you just looking forward to the next chapter of your grand saga? Either way, I promise to provide you with new apparel, and so I shall. If you'll accompany me to the Diamond Forge, we can put the finishing touches on your outfit. Shall we? What's all this about? My mother and father were slaughtered by monsters. My baby sister, still too young to fend for herself. Can you spare us no kindness? So, you hope to find your fortune? And what? You expect me to surrender my wares for pity's sake? What have you to offer in payment? As I thought. Come back when you've more than rags to your name. This is no mere treasure map. It is a guide to the vaults of Arzadal III. One of the great saw traps of Radzat Han, and a direct descendant of Alzadal Khan. A map to Alzadal's legacy. So he says. A fake I'd wager. This is no fake. The parchment is marked with an arcane glyph of passage. You may find the ruins hidden in the bounty, but you won't be setting foot inside without this in your possession. A priceless artifact is. Discovered amongst the rubble in the aftermath of the final days, and lovingly restored by yours truly. This map is the key to fabulous riches, and I'll be the king of fools to simply give it away. Be glad I am no such king boy. Your scrawny eye did never return with that treasure alive. <laughs> Oh, cruel fate! 
Why must you tempt me with wealth I am powerless to claim? How I shall envy the one who purchases that precious map. Whatever they pay will be but pittance against the golden hordes they stand to uncover. What of you, sir? Fighting man of your stature would surely relish the challenge of recovering Al Zadal's lost fortune. A fortune, you say? If I had but the strength to seize that treasure, my starving sister would never want for food. I'll take it. Will this cover the price? Well met, my friend. Someone is dressed for adventure. But why Favner of all places? Knowing you, I suspect there's more to your plans than sightseeing and shopping. Ruins beneath the bounty. Curious. And here I've acquired a map to just such a site. With that sail, I do believe I've earned the rest of the day off. Thank you for your patronage, sir. But if you'll excuse me. You needn't mind us. And now I'll fleece one of the heroes of the final days. Pray the sisters were looking elsewhere. This map may or may not be genuine. Either way, we'll need a ship to find out for sure. Lest you misunderstand, I seek the treasure not for myself. If such a fortune truly exists, then it could help ease the struggles of those who lost their loved ones in the final days. I hope to do for Thavnir what you and Alphano did for the Alamegans when you recovered the Mad King's trove. Come now. You know Alphano needs little encouragement when it comes to recounting the tales of your shared exploits. Speaking of precocious lads, that boy in the bazaar was clearly an accomplice of the merchant. Suppose his role was to draw the attention of the crowd and add weight to the merchant's bold claims. Transparent act for the most part. It was not all mummery. The need to provide for his sister rang true enough. Thus, if some portion of the profits end up in that waif's pockets, then I will consider it money well spent, whether the map leads us to the vault or not. You are coming along, yes? I 
thought as much. Now, let's see about securing a vessel. Ah, Ergica, my good man. Would you be so kind as to... Ah, oh, isn't this a pleasant surprise? I wish you had sent word ahead. I thought I was having visions for a moment there. Steady. Raha and I have been compiling old records of the students' activities. We located several accounts in the archives of Numenon and added them to the collection we recovered from the Isle of Val. And judging by the progress we've made thus far, sorting this pile will keep us occupied for days to come. But what brings you to the Annex, my friend? Surely you haven't come all this way just to watch us shuffle dusty papers around? The treasure vault of Alzadal III. And you're looking for companions to join you on this expedition. I would dearly love to accompany you, of course, but I'm afraid I'm committed to another task. On the subject of which, I had hoped to ask for your assistance. Then again, it's not so urgent that it can't wait until you've returned. You should go, Raha. I'll stay here and mind the shop, as it were. Are you sure? I'd hate to leave you short-handed. I'm sure. Just try to be back before too many moons have passed. Well... I guess we're off on another adventure already. Have you asked anyone else to come along? Then might I suggest we invite your Stola? Ever since the Scions disbanded, she spent most of her time cloistered within the Great Goobal Library hoping to piece together a method to traverse the rift. It would seem, however, that whatever wisdom she sought there was not to be found. She arrived in Charlien the other day. We spoke briefly before she began her search of Numenon. Considering what you've told us of Alzadal's extraordinary feats, I do believe your Stola would be more than interested to hear what you have to say. Blend it. Then let us head to the archives at once. Wait before you go. I have another potential member to volunteer, if you've room to spare. Uriange. He sent the students a request for materials, you see. Treatises on the architecture of treasure vaults and the like. From what I can gather, the Loperitz are looking to make improvements to their own creation, 
and wish to learn more about how we build things down here. So, why not take Urianje with you? Let him study Alzadal's legacy firsthand. None can deny the benefit of seeing something with your own eyes. If our expedition leader has no objections, I say we extend Urianje an invitation once we've spoken with your Stola. Safe travels, you two. But don't forget, I'd still like your help with that other matter I mentioned. Right. Then it's off to the library. I've never known your Stola to doze off in the middle of research before. Close my eyes for one moment. How long have you two been here? Nor did I want to fall asleep. I must have been studying for two, three days straight before exhaustion finally claimed me. As you know, I've been researching ways to travel from the source to one of its reflections. Well, looking for hints, at least. I don't expect to find a simple set of instructions tucked away in some dark corner of the library. So I've been skimming through the stacks, hoping to uncover even a partial mention of any similar feats in the past. A means to travel between worlds exists, and you can be sure I will find a way to employ it. So I promised Runa, but twould seem I've set myself a nigh impossible task. You needn't be so hard on yourself. The leap I made with the Crystal Tower was not achieved in an afternoon. It was the culmination of a collective effort spanning generations. Oh, you think me discouraged. I assure you, tis quite the opposite. A daunting challenge, and the time to sink my teeth into it. I feel like a fresh-faced student again. A scholar in her element. Indeed. Was there something else you wished to ask of me? Alzadal is no minor figure in Harnish history, and much is known about his family. But this is the first I've heard of a descendant surviving a trip to another world. 
If those tales are true, then he may have left behind some clue as to how it was accomplished. An invitation to delve into one of the world's lingering mysteries. As if I could refuse. And whence do we embark upon this expedition? Akiali, by ship. But before that, we thought to extend an invitation to Urianje as well. He was in Thalmazane, last we heard. Then by all means, let us recruit him, and be on our way. Illustrious champion. Cloaked in the mantle of the common explorer, fame set aside in thy pursuit of simple adventure. I am told a new expedition is in the offing. And thee. As ever, thou art the picture of strength. You've been keeping yourself busy, I trust? True to our plan, Thancred and I embarked upon a pilgrimage of sorts, with an eye for gauging the state of those lands through which we passed. Travels were interrupted, however, by a request for aid from our beferred lunar allies. As you may recall, the Loperids had been seeking new purpose for the moon, another role through which it might serve to benefit mankind. The Forum hath been working to advise them in this endeavor, but I return to offer mine own counsel. And this has what to do with treasure vaults, exactly? Ah, you have learned of my predicament from Mistress Cryo. I know not whence they acquired such knowledge, but the Loperets now stand convinced that adventurers delight in treasure hunts. Thus, with their newly built wonderland of riches and mystery, do they hope to entice all manner of daring delvers to the moon. So earnest and innocent was their desire to bring joy to the world that I found myself powerless to refuse them my cooperation. But what of you, my friends? Why are you come to Labyrinthos? Fascinating. This is indeed a most fortuitous opportunity. I should be honored to accept thine invitation. How long has it been, I wonder, when last our actions were not impelled by fate or desperation? Aye, though I cherish the Scion's accomplishments, tis pleasant to not have the weight of the world upon our shoulders for a change. Counting Istinian, we number five now, yes? Without knowing what traps or perils await unwary feet, we may be wise to refrain from recruiting others. I agree. Between us, we should have the skills to handle whatever situation may arise. Shall we be on our way? What, no time to spare a word for the grizzled old bard? All is well, I trust. A wasted trip, I'm afraid. I'd hoped to catch up with a former mentor while you parleyed with the rabbits, but it seems our paths were not to cross.
That's because we didn't travel by experimental etherite. It's astounding what a lack of nausea does for one's sense of well-being. In any case, as we made our way around Ilzabad, we saw that much of the continent was in various stages of chaos. A certain amount of disorder is to be expected. The final days are over, and the people no longer have a common threat binding them together. That's the thing with these fledgling troubles, eh? You need to keep an eye out, lest they mature into full-grown headaches. So, for what reason have so many esteemed personages seemed fit to gather? Beneath the waters of the bounty, you say? I see you've already stolen away my travelling partner with the promise of unexplored ruins and scholarly glory. Nay, it is not for mine own indulgence, but rather the fulfilment of my commitment to the Loperates. Ah, of course. And if you have a Stinian rounding out your group, you'll likely have all the members you need. Feeling left out? I could put in a good word for you, if you like. We may have been released from our obligations, but I'll never be free of that merciless wit of yours, will I? In all seriousness, it is best I sit this one out. Too many former scions consorting with one another might be seen as a cause for concern in certain quarters. I'll return to my usual reconnaissance and scout out the situation in the Far East. Feel free to share if you come across any interesting revelations. Till we meet again. Shall we also hasten our departure? Sir Estinian will wonder what hath become of us. What have we here? Tis not unlike a Hanish alchemical furnace in design. Well, there is one way we might find out. Stop! You mustn't touch it. Fritra! Oh, my apologies. Should I continue calling you Varsham? You may address me as you wish. My nature is no longer a secret. Still, this is not a setting I imagined for our reunion. Surely you've not entered these ruins as common looters. Would that we could deny your accusations, but I fear you're not far from the truth. Great Vritra, might we beseech thee to explain the nature of this strange contrivance? It was crafted by our alchemists at my behest, for the purpose of sealing something away.
What have we here? Tis not unlike a Hanish alchemical furnace in design. Well, there is one way we might find out. Stop! You mustn't touch it. Fritra! Oh, my apologies. Should I continue calling you Varshan? You may address me as you wish. My nature is no longer a secret. Still, this is not a setting I imagined for our union. Surely you've not entered these ruins as common looters. Would that we could deny your accusations, but I fear you're not far from the truth. Great Vritra, might we beseech thee to explain the nature of this strange contrivance? It was crafted by our alchemists at my behest, for the purpose of sealing something away. Perhaps I should simply show you. I have lifted the seal, if only for the moment, by an authority only I possess. A plainer fisher? No, my friend. Small though it may be, this is a functioning gate into the void. I must admit, I am deathly curious to know how a void gate came to be hidden in the depths of these ruins. To tell that tale, we must first peer far to the south, and even further into memory. Age five millennia past, when the Algan Empire sent an invading force to the shores of Merasidia. The southern people rallied around the commanding figures of Bahamut and Tiamat, and fought fiercely to repel the would-be conquerors. With Bahamut's defeat, however, the tide turned against them. Desperate to seize any advantage, the Merasidians resorted to summoning primal entities. In response, Emperor Zande forged a covenant with the Cloud of Darkness, sovereign among the all-devouring denizens of the Void. Thus bolstered by icons on one side and Void Scent on the other, the two armies clashed in a battle of unspeakable carnage. So much death. So much loss.
I consider myself well versed in that period of history, yet you speak as one who witnessed it happen. Indeed, I did. I heard Tiamat's roar of defiance and sped toward that war-torn land. Along with my sibling, Ashdaya. We dragons are not male or female, as men are wont to classify, but Elder Sister is the closest a mortal tongue can come to describing what she meant to me. I was the last of our brood to hatch, and Ashdaya cared for me where my sire could not. Thus I was with her when Tiamat roared, I was with her when she journeyed south, and I was with her when she fought against the void sent hordes. Yet no matter how many of their vile fiends we cast down, more rose from the abyss to take their place. Faced with an unwinnable war of attrition, Ashdaya risked her all on a final gamble. She plunged through the void gate itself to strike at the root of their strength. I tried to follow in her wake, determined to lend what aid I could. But even as I came upon Alag's glittering tower, I saw the rift close behind her. And Ashdaya has been lost to us ever since. I find I must retract my earlier claim of historical knowledge. Nowhere in the Crystal Tower's archives did I see mention of such noble sacrifice. That does not surprise me. To Alagan eyes, it must have seemed as if a lone dragon, driven to madness, simply dove through the gate and did not return. For my part, I spent long years searching for the means to reunite with Ashdaya. Until I could search no more. Until Alag was dust, and the arts to open a void gate large enough to accommodate a dragon forever lost. Yet you have the beginnings of a gate right here, under the control of a harnessed device. My discovery came before Radzathan was founded. Though I scoured the lands for a method to cross the rift, it was beneath the sea that I chanced to find a natural plane of fissure. It was, however, far too narrow to admit a worm's bulk. Only after our city rose upon the rock, and I could enlist the aid of our talented alchemists, did matters take a favorable turn. Their dedication was beyond reproach. Tirelessly, they worked to expand the fissure. And after decades of toil, it finally grew to a size that a child might pass through. Not long ago, you told us that you called out to your kin, that Ashdaya's answer was silence. I suspect the conclusion to your tale is not a joyful one. With hope in my heart, I used a simulacrum to cross the threshold. But no, I did not find her. What I found was a host of void scent clamoring around the opening they had sensed. Twas but a moment, but enough. I had no choice but to retreat and allow the portal to contract once more. The gate was a threat to your people. You had to decide between endangering Razadhan and abandoning your sister. And you chose the latter. Twas not that thy sibling scorned thy call. Was that she was trapped beyond a barrier through which neither roar nor dragon may pass. Even now, 
in the desolate world of the 13th. I can scarce imagine your pain, yet it was wise not to linger in that place. Too long a sojourn, and even a being of your power risks being warped into a creature of the void. You've seen this phenomenon before, when we stepped into the darkness. As did I. Were it not for Une and Doga, or Nero, for that matter, we might never have made it home. Do you remember what happened to Nero? How his wounds allowed the Void's corruption to enter his body and twist his ether? Had it been allowed to progress much longer, I presume he would have been fully transformed. Then there is little hope for Ashdaya. Ah, no. I hadn't meant to. I speak only of possibilities. The scales of the First Brood are extraordinarily resistant to ethereal fluctuations. They are the protective talisman's core components, after all, and even the corruption I described would struggle to overcome. Of course. With the warding scale in one's possession, one could conceivably survive a stay in the 13th without being warped by its energies. Be that as it may, it is too late to rescue my sister. Five thousand years too late. And now countless others look to me for guidance and protection. So when I sensed intruders in the ruins, I came only to ensure that the gate remained closed. That, and to secure the treasure, of course. I wish only to forget the rest.
into the trading port of Yedlamad. Our merchants must have their operations restored, their ships rebuilt. Commerce must flow once more. None were spared the tragedy of the final days. Of this, I am well aware. But an absence was created by the loss of Karazal's consortium. And by filling it, we provide new means for our fishermen, our artisans, and others to bring their wares to distant markets. And what of the children who were left without family to care for them? which weigheth heavily upon my mind. A simple gift of coin will soon be exhausted, leaving these young souls adrift on the fringes of our society. Nay, a proper solution is needed, one which doth guarantee their welfare for years to come. Thou hast surely seen how other nations rise to meet this challenge adventurer. What dost thou deem the wisest cause?
In that time of strife, any one of us could have broken. Any one of us may have been taken by despair. When I think of Kalzal, I feel no hatred. Only a stinging regret that we could not save him as well. Isn't that right, men? This bodes well for that boy. Mirad was it? Perhaps he can cut ties with that shady peddler. Then let it be done. Henceforth, this initiative shall be known as the Kalzal Foundation. Nabdeen, thou art to assemble a patrol and ensure that no child in this city liveth in squalor. Dragon and man, side by side in pursuit of a brighter morrow. Reminded of Ishgard. Right, here we all are. You discovered something new. I took a closer look at that device. I was able to determine how it keeps the Void Gate sealed, but not how it might instead be employed to expand the opening. For that, I would need to reference the technique developed by Vritra's alchemists, no records of which appear to have survived the intervening years. We know this, so why have you sent for us? Have you learned aught of value or not? Patience, good sir. One must introduce the subject before launching into specifics. From what we understand, travel between worlds is accomplished by passing through the nebulous rift which exists between them. Picture, if you will, the moment you were called to the first. You touched a focus of some kind to help the Exarch pinpoint your location. His summoning spell then channeled the energies of the Crystal Tower to begin your journey to his world. The magics tore a hole in the wall separating Source and Shard and cast you into the intervening nothingness. In that place, the laws of nature hold no sway. Yet even through this realm of temporal and spatial instability, you were born safely to your destination in the first. The feet that guided you across such an unimaginable distance, both physical and metaphorical, was nothing short of a miracle. Then what of the many voids sent found in the source? Who guides them here and how? An excellent question. Though there are several methods by which the Void's denizens might intrude upon our world, the rituals of summoning are the most typical. For example, let us consider the Gargoyle, a creature of middling power. Call 
upon such an entity, the prospective summoner must force open a void gate. The portal lasts but a moment and is relatively small, allowing only an imp or other lesser being to squeeze through with their physical body intact. Our more powerful gargoyle, however, is too large for that. Creating a gate big enough for him would require vast amounts of energy, far beyond the reserves of any one mortal practitioner. Instead, tis far more common to bring over only the entity's soul we had a taste of that ourselves when a certain exarch dragged us to the first. And just as our bodies remained in our world, the Void Sense physical form is left behind in the 13th. Once at its destination, the summoned soul is granted a temporary shell to inhabit. In the gargoyle's case, a stone effigy has proven a suitable vessel. You said that Void Scent must be called here deliberately by someone in the source, reeled in like a fisherman with his catch. Exactly. For a being to navigate the chaos of the rift, with or without form, there must needs be a guiding agent on the other side. When the hordes poured forth from Alag's Great Gate, it was the technologists who drew them through. Though, to my knowledge, planar fissures are, in essence, natural passages between our world and the Void, which require no such guidance to traverse. Why is only the boundary between the Source and the Thirteenth so fragile? So much so that it often tears open of its own accord. I believe solving that mystery is key to understanding travel between the Source and its reflections. And how do you intend to get your answers? No. The danger is too great. Perhaps. But what some call danger, others think of as adventure. Were you not listening to my tale? Never mind that the means to expand the gate has been lost to the ages. Even could you force the portal wide enough, you would be greeted by an army of murderous horrors the very instant you step through. I assure you I was most attentive, and I agree that to go alone would be certain death. But if I were to bring along one who has already braved the 13th and humbled the cloud of darkness, well, I imagine my chances would be much improved. I had a feeling you might say that. Once again, I put my life in your ever-reliable hands. That said, as much as I would like to march straight back to the Void Gate, there is the small matter of being 
unable to open it without the Sartrap's personal authority. As I've said before, I will grant you and yours any boon you choose to name, provided it does not endanger my people. You have my word that we will take every precaution. Not a single void scent will be allowed to threaten Radzat Han, assuming we manage to expand the portal in the first place. You have a plan. Actually, I had hoped you might help us with that. I presume the alchemists you retained supplied you with some explanation of their methodology. That they did. House Daimir was overseeing the project. Daimir. Daimir. Ah, yes. The family associated with the great work. I did not fully comprehend the theory, but their research began with a void scent which had slipped through the fissure. After a thorough examination, they created an arcane simulacrum possessed of similar qualities. A man-made void scent, if you will. It was apparently indispensable in their efforts to enlarge the gate. A man-made void scent? Yes. Being great admirers of the Archons, House Daimir submitted detailed notes to Charlene's official committee. They expected praise and accolades for their simulacrum, and were thus devastated to be informed that their work had been classified as prohibited material. If that's true, then those notes might still be stored in a forbidden archive somewhere. Not Google, of course, since that library had yet to be built. Which leaves us with... Yes, it may very well hold a copy. In which case, I say we head directly to Charlian. Unless you anticipate needing help to reach the high shelves, I see myself being of little use. Go on ahead. I still need to find Mirad and tell him about the Kalzal Foundation. Let us be on our way as well. Resolve to venture into the void. Do I sit idly by? If House Damien's notes are to be found anywhere, it will be here. Let us begin. Yes. The Aether signature is unmistakable. I've felt the traces of House Damia's resonance many times at the great work. Time to see what all the fuss was about.
Among the ranks of the Void Sent, there exist entities with the power to call forth their brethren from beyond. The species known as Atomos, however, is uniquely prodigious in this regard. From its distended maw, it can expel an endless procession of Void-born creatures, a talent which sorely tested the Radiant Host in its battles against these abominations. Surmising that the entity itself was acting as a void gate, we endeavored to capture a small specimen and subsequently examine its physiological structure. Our findings revealed that the Atomos had absorbed a planar fissure into its own flesh, which it could expand at will into a functioning gate. Upon further analysis, we identified an ethereal wave pattern emitted during this process. A pattern we were able to emulate by passing crystal-stored ether through a specially designed prism. We proceeded to embed said prism into an arcane simulacrum, thus completing what we have dubbed our artificial atoms. How could I have been so blind to the possibilities? This species, not to mention its ability to summon Void Scent, has been discussed among academics for years now. Just before the advent of the Seventh Umbral Calamity, we received reports of Atomos sightings from every corner of Eorzea. Surely you've at least heard the tales. And still, House Damir went and built a mock Atomus of their very own. I'm not surprised the Archons consigned their work to a restricted archive. It was no easy task, but at last we've unearthed the volume we've been searching for. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted to stay longer. See what other forbidden titles might be lurking on these shelves? Ah, but that would be abusing the very special privilege we've been granted now, wouldn't it? Better not. alone were impressive enough, but I never dreamed such a treasure lay hidden in the depths of the bounty. It may have been helpful to know this device existed, Your Excellency. My apologies. The gate was a secret I shared with none but my closest advisors. I feared for what might happen should those with ill intentions learn of its existence. What is it you're doing now? There is something I wish to verify. The Noah reports claim that a short stint into the Void carries little risk of etheric imbalance. Should one suffer an injury, however, or if one's expedition drags on longer than intended, that risk becomes significantly greater. Graha theorized that a warding scale would confer protection from the Void's corrupting influence, but I would prefer to test that hypothesis before we set foot in the 13th ourselves. So, this is an experiment of sorts? Yes, an experiment. Tell me, how would you go about testing the efficacy of the warding scale?
Very good. I see you've been paying attention. As Vritra sent his simulacrum, so too shall we rely on a familiar to bear the brunt of any unpleasant consequences. Now, a lowly imp can navigate a fissure, no matter how narrow. Which means an arcane entity of similar stature should be able to manage the same. I hadn't wanted it to come to this, but no other familiars will do, I'm afraid. I mislike the sound of that. What manner of fiend does she mean to summon? From ocean rise and cloud bank form, from mountain spring and rainfall storm, from river flow and life be born. I fear she's been possessed. Oh, come now. That was adorable. Though not my first choice, these familiars I conceived of as a child had the best chance of fitting through the gate. I only wish my younger self had considered a more dignified ending to the creation ritual. In any case, these two should serve as well. This one will bear a warding scale. And when they return from the 13th, we can observe how the talisman, or absence thereof, has affected the progress of the Void's corruption. If I could impose upon you to open the gate, Your Excellency? Ah, yes, of course. We should also be wary of Void Scent slipping through while we conduct our experiment. Estinian, you are to keep Nidana safe from harm. As you say. You had best be on your guard as well. And we are glad for it. Let us begin, shall we? I think we've waited long enough. Nixies, return to my side.
Thank you, little one. You did well. Oh, the poor thing. Its essence has been irrevocably warped. I must reseal the void gate. That was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. And what of our experiment? Let's say the results speak for themselves. The unprotected Nixie has suffered extensive etheric corruption. As Nidana observed, it's well on its way to becoming a void scent. The one merged with the talisman, however, appears unaffected. I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Rest now, little ones. Graha's theory was correct, then. So it would seem that while our second familiar was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. It was, of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. We may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the Void's instability, but my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste, and made of that world a useless void. You remember Una Kalhai, the unusual child we met during our troubles with the Warring Triad. He explained the fate of the 13th thus. The champions of that ill-fated world use the stone known as Aurasite to contain the power of primals. But those self-same heroes were gradually corrupted by the Aurasite's bleeding energies, transforming into fiends with an endless hunger for ether. By the time anyone thought to oppose them, Light's strength had grown too feeble and the balance of the 13th tipped into eternal darkness. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. 
A void in every sense of the word. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Vritra. Our journey into the Thirteenth is but the first leg of a longer voyage. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new mysteries and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. But first, I must focus on refining the warding talisman. Then I can begin work on constructing an artificial atomos. Or I could, if I had the relevant manuals to hand. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sartrap's family archives? <clears throat> Your Excellency? Hmm? Oh! Yes. That can be arranged. I will speak to my officials upon our return. We will see you back in the city then. Hey, Stola! The adjustments are going well, I hope. Tis a lengthy process, but the end is in sight, yes. That's wonderful news. I myself had some good fortune searching through the Sartrap's private records. What I found was a transaction log dated around the same period as when Alzadal's legacy was built. It included a purchase list of highly exclusive alchemical components. And I knew I'd discovered the key to making the artificial atomos. I then visited the High Crucible to commission the materials. After I'd explained my requirements, I was beset by volunteers insisting I allow them to help with the entire project. The usual reaction to someone forcing open a void gate is to run for the hills. Harnish academics certainly are a different breed. The alchemists of old were cut from a similar cloth. The unknown held no fear for them. Indeed, they were ever eager to seek new knowledge, regardless of the danger. And were you not also fearless? Heedless, even, in your determination. My sire entered his dormancy before I was hatched. And so it was Ashdaya who kept my eggs safe and warm. It created a bond between us. Even long after I learned to fend for myself, I rarely strayed from her side. She was my guardian, my sister, my dear companion. And not a single day passes that I do not mourn her absence. No matter how deep the darkness, I would not surrender my search. I promised myself the time would come when we would once more take to the skies together. But I am satrap now. The Radiant Host is here to serve, Your Excellency. Nabdeen, what is this about? Sir Estinian told us of your predicament. For centuries you have protected Rads at Han, never showing your true self, hiding behind a curtain and living only in service to the people. 
Your dedication meant more to us than your deceit, and so did we accept you as our rightful ruler. After all that you have sacrificed for this nation, did you imagine we would begrudge you your heart's desire? We survived the final days. We are a strong and proud people. We, the Radiant Host, will keep Thavnir safe in your absence. I am grateful for your loyalty and for your encouragement. And yet... Now you listen to me, Vashan! You are wearing that face, after all. As I have told you before, you are a little brother to us all. And if you are family, then so too is your sister. We are there for you if you need us. But do not ask us to sit by and watch while you abandon a sibling you have ached to rescue for millennia. succeed in opening the way. It is only a matter of time. All you need do is prepare to step through to the other side. Your Excellency, I wanted to thank you for building the orphanage. It means so much that my sister and I will have a place to be together safe and happy and i hope that you and your sister can be together again too Protect them well. Such were the words I once said to you. And here I stand, failing to live up to them. If my heart is torn, I am fit to protect neither Ajdaya nor Rajadhan. My people, I have come to a decision. Bashan will depart Thavnir for a time. My dragon self will remain in the palace, but only to conduct the satrap's most essential duties. While I am focused on controlling this vessel, there may be matters that escape my attention. I rely on you, my trusted friends, to watch over one another until I return. Take care and fair fortune, little brother. Many tears would be shed should you come to harm. I would not dare make you cry.
Empty sword, bereft of service.